Good morning, my friends. My name is Mama Jigmea Gyatso. I'm a Buddhist, non-sectarian Buddhist monk, yogi, healer, and teacher. And today I'm going to share some thoughts with you about love. Love is actually integral to what the Buddha actually taught. Yes, he taught about breathing meditation. I think about five or six, five to seven discourses. But in the uh, historical record, he gave over a hundred discourses on love meditation. I should uh, infer that love is pretty damn important. Now, we often talk, hear me talk about self-love, neighborhood love, or universal love. Today we're going to talk about global love. Now, global not love is, is not a euphemism for a 12-year-old 12 12-year-old 12 boy who has discovered his uh, <laughs> his father's copy of Playboy. I'm sure many 12-year-old boys love what we could call globes, but this is completely different. When I refer to global love. I refer to loving every man, woman, and child on the earth. I refer to loving every being on earth, whether they have two legs, four legs, whether they walk, crawl, swim, or fly. For approximately 10,000 years, we've had this thing called civilization. We've had capitalism, whether it was based on barter or coinage. This thing, the idea that we could commodify everything in our life. In other words, we could attach a financial value to everything and being and phenomena and somehow use that to justify the absence of love. What is the absence of love? Well, that's cruelty, hatred, violence, or even indirect violence or implied violence. What's implied in violence? Folks, I'm not going to give you a definition. I'm going to give you an example. If your society has the cure to the disease you possess, but will not share that cure with you or administer that treatment for you, because they don't feel you have enough money, that is implied violence. Folks, if your society recognizes that organic foods are biodynamic foods even better, can benefit your lucidity, your emotions, and your physical health, yet deny you access to it because they feel you don't have enough money, then that is implied violence. Folks, when, when, when people will use highfalutin justifications to disguise their greed that separates you from what you need, that's implied violence. When it becomes illegal for you to point out the injustice of the system, and you are threatened with state-sanctioned violence at the hands of the police, that's implied violence. When you are threatened with state-sanctioned violence at the hands of the police, for trying to report the criminal destructive activity of a transnational corporation, that is implied violence. Implied violence is rooted in greed and hate, neither of which have anything to do with love. They are also rooted in fear. Here's the irony. There is no inherent meaning or value in dollars or in currency or coinage. There is no inherent meaning in gold or silver. They only possess the meaning that we ascribe to it. 
Uh, my training is non-sectarian. I used to have a Gela teacher from the Yellow Hat sect of Tibetan Buddhism. He was fond of saying that all uh, things, beings, and phenomena have no inherent meaning, only that which we mentally impute to them. We consider the the color spectrum of the electromagnetic scale of visible lights. There is no inherent relationship between the word yellow and that which we describe as yellow, or the word red and that which we describe as red. We just link those sounds to those physical phenomena. Likewise, we ascribe value to pieces of paper with dead presidents on them, or coins, or gold, or silver. But in the larger scope of things, are coins, or paper, or gold, or silver really more important than a child's, or a woman's, or a man's, or a cow's, or a pig's, or a fish, or a chicken's well-being? Folks, love is contagious, and so is hate. If we can exploit an animal, we can exploit a child, we can exploit an adult, we can exploit an ecosystem, even if it's our only ecosystem. I once saw a single panel comic that was set in a post-apocalyptic, dystopic future. You see people dressed in rags, and they're filthy, and they're standing around, or sitting around the fire. You see a man dressed in what once was an Armani suit, and he says, Yes, the actions of me and my associates did hearken the second Crimean extinction, but not before we created record high quarterly profits. So it's all worth it. No, it's not. Let's be men and women of global love. And of course, as a reward, we might get some global love. May you and yours be healthy and happy. I invite you to check out the link below. It will take you to a page on my website where you can get your hands on two very important books. One is about the zeitgeist movement, about moving from a scarcity-based economy to a resource-based economy. And the other is called Healthy eating healthy world and it's about how our decisions about what we put in our mouth can affect our personal health the world economy the world ecology and the happiness of other living beings whose emotions are and happiness and comfort are just as important as our own bye bye